here's some more on the really big trilobites and very superb trilobites of uh, Morocco in the uh, North African Atlas Mountains. Um, we mentioned earlier this one here. This one here is Cambriopalus, and uh, it's uh, uh, right at the la either late, very late Lower Cambrian, or it is right at the very beginning of the Middle Cambrian. It's uh, uh, one of the older trilobites that's found in quantity uh, in the um, Atlas Mountains in Morocco, uh, the genus Cambropalus uh, telestro. And um, the, the one above that, which of course if the strata is above uh, that containing Cambropalus, the, the um, uh, trilobites found in it will be a little bit younger. And this one right here is Arcata paradoxes. This is Middle Cambrian and uh, they are big and they're heavy. <laughs> Many other Middle Cambrian trilobites found in uh, Morocco, but they're, they're not these real huge ones. These uh, uh, Cambriopalus and uh, Arcato paradoxides are paradoxides, are two of the largest found in the Cambrian. The third one is this one here. Uh, it's a dicolocephalid and uh, it is found actually in the uh, lower Artovician, although it's given the genus Dicolocephalina after Dicolocephalus, which is a uh, Upper Cambrian, late Upper Cambrian trilobite found particularly in Minnesota and Wisconsin. And uh, there's similarities between that and this one. The genus of this is Di Dicolocephalina. Uh, and it's lower Artovician. It's uh, very bottom of the Artovician, almost Cambrian, but not quite. And the next one is trilobite of the genus Asaphis, which is a uh, trilobite very, very similar to one in North America called Isotelus. And uh, this is, but uh, uh, essentially. Well, uh, east of uh, the Atlantic Ocean in the um, uh, um, Avalonian terrain, they uh, name this trilobite Asaphis, and in North America, uh, this um, one is uh, Isotelus. And then uh, here's uh, the related North American trilobite. This is this is Isotelus, and uh, they get big also. They find these, and this one's from New York State, upstate New York. They find these in Ohio, and they find them in Illinois, and Missouri, um, 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 Wisconsin, and uh, Iowa. And uh, it's a big trilobite sometimes, but uh, and it's, this one's heavy also. And it's uh, this one's middle Artovician. They're, they're generally in North America, middle to upper Artovician. However, the genus Asaphis does occur in the lower Artovician as well, but it's it, uh, essentially very similar to, uh, to Isotelus. Uh, here's a few um, Artovician trilobites in addition to uh, the ones I showed you before. This one is um, kind of looks like a uh, calumine. I'll show you a calumine in a moment, but uh, this is. Uh, Kind of looks like a calumine, but it's not. Uh, it doesn't have, if you can look, this right here um, should have what looks like an eye, which a lot of people confuse with a calumine as an eye, and it's not. It's called a papibral lobe, but these are not calumines. This one here is a calumine, this, this trilobite. And this is what a lot of people associate with Moroccan trilobites, these. They were the ones to first come out in quantity. They're really dirt cheap, at, uh, sometimes at rock shows, and they're nice. This is Paradoxes. It's, uh, if you flip it over, okay. One of the things with these huge Moroccan trilobites, if you flip it over, like this, and you look at the back, you can see that it's kind of made out of a composite of pieces of uh, siltstone, essentially, uh, brown or tan siltstone. 
you look carefully, and you can't really see it in the video, but if you look real carefully, you can see that there's pieces of material that have been worked in and then um, embedded in some kind of uh, uh, resin. Uh, occasionally you can see little bubbles in it. And this has led to the view that these huge Cambrian trilobites, like Paradoxides and also the uh, uh, Cambropalus uh, of the other video, that these giant trilobites are uh, not real, that they're, they're, they're fakes, they're, they're casts. And that is simply not true. Uh, I've, uh, say, I've collected these many years ago in um, Newfoundland, similar in black shale and rather than this tan mudstone. But uh, the rock is very crumbly, and there are complete trilobites in there, but when you try to get them out, they break up. And what you do, you have to collect the pieces, and then you work them together. You work them to piece them together. And this is what the Moroccans have done. They have the same problem when they work these in these pits. Uh, the um, big trilobites break up and break up into pieces. And particularly on the back side of the trilobite, pieces get lost sometimes. And this is what they do. They take and take a, a resin. I think it's rather, it's uh, essentially uh, uh, either epoxy based or uh, um, uh, polyester based, similar to body putty. And they fill in the back. Uh, if, when they piece it together, there's pieces of rock missing. And um, this gives the, people, gives the idea that this thing is a composite, but it's not. If you look at carefully at the actual trilobite, if you actually look at the, um, the uh, actual bug itself, uh, you can see that it is original material. You can see the, the if you're familiar with uh, fossils and how they occur in the rock, you can see that this is authentic. Sometimes the edges of them, the edges around here, uh, around in here, the edges, uh, the edges of them, like around uh, here, uh, like around here. Uh, some of those have been restored and uh, uh, darkened in or uh, painted in with uh, iron oxide, brown or uh, tan iron oxide. But uh, uh, that's the only of any of these big trilobites that I've seen. That's the only actual, uh, might say, uh, uh, over reconstruction or over -pre preparation that uh, you can actually see. They uh, they really do a good job of preparing these, and they are difficult to prepare. They when you work them. When you get them out of the rock, they tend to fragment. They tend to break up into pieces, and you have to piece those together. And that's what has given rise to the idea that uh, these fossils aren't real. No, they are. I've never seen one that is uh, 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 not the real McCoy. Now, with the younger ones, with the Devonian ones, the one, they're in black limestone. Yes, there are a lot of those that are, that are cast and have been fabricated. And the other ones that are fabricated are sometimes when they make groups of them, uh, groups of them, uh, plates of a composite of multiple trilobites. Those are uh, kind of phony baloney uh, because the trilobites are real. But uh, and this is the Cambrian ones. Now the, the younger ones, the Devonian ones, a lot of times the trilobites aren't real either. And they put them together in a, uh, in a composite. Uh, and um, that is a certain amount of phony baloney. But uh, the, um, these tan-colored um, Cambrian trilobites, like Paradoxides and Cambriopalus, uh, as far as I've been able to find, every one I've ever seen has been authentic. Now, there may be some that are uh, totally casts, but I've not seen any of them. And lastly, here are some of the uh, Demonian trilobites. I'm only showing a few of these because it's a kind of a different world when it comes to trilobites. Uh, after the Devonian, trilobites become much rarer, but there's a very, very rich fauna of them in Morocco, but uh, sometimes uh, the Devonian ones are the ones that are uh, sometimes by molding and such. And, and in fact, I think this one here, the genus Dicranurus, I think this one is done that way. It's a nice, they're very they're spiny trilobites. You can see the, the uh, all those little spines, and uh, if you look real carefully, I don't think you can see it on the screen, but there's a couple of little air bubbles in there. And what they've done is taken a mold and made a cast, and then they very cleverly inserted that into the rock that uh, uh, these um, come out of. 
and um, this one came from uh, Tucson and it came from a card table that had about 20 of them on there and they were all essentially the same when you're when you're going to fake trilobites, you don't put them all out at once. You put out one at a time. I always thought it was kind of humorous that there was a 20 of them. And, and this thing, I think this was 25 bucks. It's a, for 25 bucks, it's a really nice replica. It really is. It's a really nice. They do some really nice work. So there's not paying 25 bucks for that is not unreasonable at all. But it's the genus Dicronurus, and it's Lower Devonian. It comes out of the, the Atlas Mountains. And then here's uh, another one that's... Uh, uh, for, for also Lower Devonian from the Atlas Mountains. It's a neat, and I'm suspect of this one as well, although I can't see any little holes in it, uh, which are of molding uh, flaws sometimes, uh, which you can use to identify uh, when these Devonian ones particularly are cast. They have these little little pinholes scattered over them, uh, over the actual trilobite, which is when, uh, happens when they make a cast of the trilobite from a mold. So anyway, this is uh, Lower Devonian. And if you like this, please subscribe and hit the button below. Okay, I have a series of books on related material like this, including quite a bit on the Midwest, including Missouri. And uh, if you're interested in them, click on the uh, box that you see, and uh, uh, it'll give you more information. Perfect.